we're minus one, but we gained one, right? So welcome back to our Tuesday edition, Still Dope. And we have the fabulous Tracy with us this week. I know you guys have seen her before. I would de- I ta- tie in my, you know, our hanging buddy. <laughs> and our fashionista. Oh, she, keeps us, she keeps us in the know of all the shiznos that's going down in the fashion industry <laughs> and the word on the street. So welcome, Miss Tracy. Hi, Still Dopers. How are you? I'm well. I'm well for this frigid Tuesday. Is it cold outside? It's a little wet. A little. It's a little cold. A little chilly. Yeah. I had. I had to go run an errand this morning, and I had the the ridiculous notion to put on a little old sweatshirt. And I walked outside, and I was like, "Uh, no, ma'am, go back in the house and get your damn coat. Stop acting Mm -hmm. like it's it's May, cause it ain't." No, I've been nip, stuck at nip, the nip. desk all day, all day since 7 a.m. And I'm like just about to cut free. After this, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. <laughs> you better go pour yourself a glass of wine and make some dinner and call it a night. I might have a cookie, a cookie maybe. You know I'm not having no wine. It's Taco Tuesday, guys. Just don't go get no Big Mac, all right? <laughs> well, that Big Mac I had the other day was damn good. No. All right, ladies, so let's like kind of jump into it. So today we're, we're kind of like um, piggybacking off of last week's episode of Married at First Sight when Dom decided that she was going to cut her divorce. And so Tanya and I and Tracy, we got to talking, like, what is it that women want? And then we started really rifting on what are some of our unconventional men that we're attracted to? Really wanted Chris to be here because I know he's got a couple of unconventional women that he's attracted to. So we wanted to discuss that. But before we go into that, we got to talk about the Chris Rock special on Saturday because that is blowing up the internet. I, for one, did not see it. It was Mm. on my calendar. I I know, Ty's like, wait, what? (laughs) I was going to watch it. And then... As I started to yesterday, I'm like, you know, I don't want to see black people beefing anymore. And I know that's probably not what it was about. I don't really know um, what he talked about. I knew probably Jada and Will would come up into it, but I just didn't have the heart for it this time. I just like, you know, I'm going to pass until all of this kind of dies down because it's not even so much them beefing. It's this team beefing against Will, this team beefing against Chris, and everybody beefing against Jada. I want it to stop, but I do want you guys' opinion. So you all kind of like, you know, go let me know what I miss. If I should just go ahead and just watch it, what? Tracy, go ahead. Uh, listen, Tracy, you watched it live. I didn't watch it live. Yeah. Um, I watched it yesterday, so I didn't get the whole after live show. Um but I'm I'm curious. I'm 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 gonna be very careful. So I'm, I want to see what Tracy's thoughts. So I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you have this. Go on, sis. So I have to I have to paint the picture. I first of all set a timer on my Netflix on my television. I set a reminder in my phone. Oh, you were serious. And I watched the pre-show, the live <laughs> recording and the after show. I was not playing around. I needed to know what was all being said because I've been a Chris Rock fan from like the the, the early days, like the I'm gonna get you sucker days. Like mm-hmm. pour it in my hand for a dime. <laughs> days, you understand? So mm-hmm. I believe like this man is so talented, so amazing. I couldn't reduce his entire career to the slap. Mm -hmm. And I think what a lot of people are forgetting is that leading up to that moment, both of these men have these really beautiful histories for all of us. I mean, Chris Rock did his, his whole hair documentary. He did, you know, all these amazing, all these amazing things in Hollywood as far as, 
his acting career. Has he said some real crazy, reckless things? Yes, that's what he built his whole comedy career on. Will Smith came from being a rapper who was not taken very seriously, not really respected in his industry to being this um, this really amazing kind of iconic actor. So when these two black men came to a head at the Oscars last year, I was shocked. You know, I, I hadn't seen it happen live. I was DVRing it and then I was on, I think Instagram, things started blowing up on Instagram. Like, oh my God, was that real? Was that real? And I was like, what happened? So I immediately jumped to my DVR, rewinded it like maybe two, three minutes after it happened and saw it happen on my DVR. I was like, whoa, this is not fake. This is real. In the moment, I, I so many emotions ran through me. So fast forward to me watching this last week. I was proud of the fact that so many people came out to support Chris Rock. Very proud of the fact that he did an amazing set up until the point where he brought up Will and Jada, which I felt was a low point of the entire thing. I, I feel like that's where he he lost any <laughs> any integrity that he had gained for the really? entire. Yes, he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do it. He called Jada a bitch, which I think was very unnecessary. Jada did not slap you. You did not have to refer to this woman as a bitch. You did not have to drag her for sleeping with her son's friend, which is tacky, very, you know, frowned upon in American society, but not her battle. Whatever beef you guys have behind the scenes, she's not the one that assaulted you. So, and then he ended up flubbing the joke about Will Smith, the big joke that was like the one that was supposed to be like the nail in the coffin about the movie Emancipation. He he friggin' face planted the damn joke. So yeah. It, it, at the end of the day, he just looked like a kind of like a tired old man wearing like a teenager's outfit. <laughs> it it just took away from the entire moment, which up to that point could have been a really amazing like reclamation for him. That was my take. Okay, that's interesting. Go ahead, Tanya. <laughs> I absolutely loved it. Okay. I wasn't feeling his, like you, Tracy, I have been a fan of Chris Rock since- He's hilarious. Way back in the day. I mean, I'm talking jacked up teeth Chris Rock talking like you said, and I'm gonna get you sucker. How much for one rib? One rib. One rib. And I've been a fan of his ever since. Um, I would like to beg to differ because I the whole time I was watching the show on Netflix, I was like, I'm looking at the clock, I'm looking at the time, and I'm like, you were waiting. Like we got we got sixty minutes here. This show is only sixty minutes. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, when are we gonna get to Will and Jada? I'm like, you had me waiting a whole year. Let's get to this. And then when he got to it, I just wanted more. He didn't. He he didn't give me. Like I'm like, that's it. When he when it ended, I was like, their own jokes about themselves. Like <laughs> they do their own comedy about themselves without knowing it. <laughs> You're right. But here's the thing, like everything Chris Rock said, and I know Chris Rock is getting some flack on, you know, calling Jader a bitch and talking about her entanglements and all of that. But at the end of the day, Will and Jada talk about it. Yeah, they, do. they bring, they air they all, their, they, bring, they bring all their mess to the red table talk. So don't, let's not judge Chris for, spilling the tea that's already been spilled. I'm not judging him for it. I'm just, I just feel like he, like the content about his daughter to me was hilarious. Like that was top notch. I loved it. Loved that content about his daughter. Now what, I'll, I'll tell you the joke that I felt he dragged out too long was the one about uh, women his age. I didn't really like that content too much. But you know what? I <laughs> I was a little triggered by it, but you know what? A little bit. 
I get what, it. What did you say? I didn't. Um, what was the content of the joke? Women is AIDS, but obviously he, it was putting them down. He said he prefers dating younger women because he could buy them a pair of shoes. As and they'll be okay. women, women his age, which I consider to be our age, is, mm -hmm. who want you to repair their roof or fix their car for them. But here's the thing. It's jokes. I didn't take it. I wasn't offended yeah. by it. I literally, when he's, when he talked about it and he's like, you know, these young girls, they, they're like, Hey daddy. Okay. Daddy. Okay. Well, I need a pair of shoes, daddy. And I was dying laughing. And then he was like, women dating women, my age, they're like, can you fix my roof? Cause I'm like, I took that personal, not in a bad way. Cause I'm like, Motherfucker, that's the shit I'm just saying. A lot more to the table. <laughs> that's so think this, about I own a home, and you know what? If you want to be with me, I don't. I will wear pay less shoes all day, every day. But bro, if you can help, if you really want to help me out, yeah, fix my roof, fix my HVAC system outside, my my you know my friggin' air conditioning, my heating system, renovate my kitchen. I'm okay with that. Oh. I'm an avid Still Dope podcast listener, and I remember you guys were talking about the travel bros, vacation bros, whatever the hell. That's mm -hmm. bros. So for That's me, I'm like, these are the type of fools that will be listening, that type of ilk will be listening to him like, yeah, you right. That's why I'm, I'm going to Santo Domingo because these American women, all they want to do is spin up your money. Like I just, it was giving me like, the wrong people are going to hear this. And I guess they were going to feel like that anyway. But I'm like, the wrong people are going to hear this and be like, yeah, let me date somebody 15 years my junior because they're a cheat. You but know, from like, the joke, from what you said, I, I just spending money like, regardless. It just, it just sounded like, I don't know, I felt like a little seed of it devalued uh, older women. I just did, I, I was like, it sounds like it devalued younger women too. Like, it, 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 it really wasn't it really wasn't kind to black women period it okay. was they were jokes but i was like you're so talented you could have told some other jokes mm -hmm. and it went on too long in my opinion but yeah. he, he was like i he was like i don't stay buff to listen to anita baker i'm trying to date doja cat i'm like doja cat don't want you sir but he said that before <laughs> so okay so from one of his one of his other sets one of his other shows like that's classic chris rock when he said yeah i just want to date joja cat because he brought that up before in one of his stand-up comedies on netflix crazy. where he was talking about dating older women as opposed to young women and yeah. he was all about because i just want to i he's like i felt and he he made himself the butt of the joke when he was like yeah. i'm looking at Rihanna, like yeah, he saw that's, he like was in the so same. So that's room what he Rihanna. needed. That's that's the balance that the joke needed, and it did mm. not have. He did not make yeah. enough fun of himself and men his age to give that joke the balance that it probably needed. He, but I he didn't felt, have to do that because he, he, I needed it. <laughs> no, I didn't need it because I'm like I remember when he said he made fun of himself as the old man in the room trying to still be in this Holly, he's in this Hollywood scene. And now he's looking at people like Rihanna and Beyonce and whoever. And he's yeah. like, yeah, like thinking he's going to get him. He's like, and they're looking at me like, I'm the old, uh, I'm the old dusty uncle. And I'm like, because you are. Yeah, you are. I feel like I, 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 I don't, I mean, I didn't see it. So I'm not going to really make a comment on that because it does sound like he kind of went, he he really kind of talked about the younger and the older. But you're right, Shahida. He did kind of dog out younger women because yeah. he made it sound like they could just literally. He's like they put the shoes on and then and they just walked around like, how do you see the daddy? And it was mm -hmm. a joke. It was mm -hmm. a joke. Don't get mm -hmm. me wrong. And it is not to be taken literally. It really is right. to be taken literally. But it was just kind of like, oh come on, Chris. You could. He. I feel like he could have done better. I just think it was Chris's moment. Chris is a. Chris is smart for doing wait he he didn't say shit for the whole year he said, and a, couple he said a couple he of things. waited and not he, much she didn't say much he created he said a little bit but he didn't say a whole much he didn't mm -hmm. say a whole lot and he didn't he never acknowledged will and jada period he came out i i find it i, I shouldn't say genius because that's not genius i would say it's mm -hmm. it's it's 
perfect timing and it's smart on his part from an entertainer standpoint where he's everybody's talking about Chris and the Oscars are on Sunday. And everybody, you don't think that He's somebody, hosting, right? Who's hosting? No, it's a. I think it's Jimmy Kimmel hosting. But you don't. Please don't. No, the timing, the minute. timing was great. But because of the way they framed it, like the, it was such a big thing. And then they have like all these other comics and actors come out and talk about his career. Arsenio, who I didn't even realize Arsenio had given him his first. TV appearance. I don't I remember, remember that. Mm -hmm. And then Arsenio was on the show. It, and it, they had Kareem Abdul Jabbar. Like it was so. Oh, I'm pissed that I'm pissed that Netflix didn't leave it on Netflix so that we can watch it. So let me ask you. I'm sorry you to can't watch it. The the the. I, it, it wasn't showing up. It wasn't showing up. But Tracy, let me ask you this because um, I want to know if this was addressed. He wore the Prince sign necklace mm -hmm. on his neck yeah in the intro he was like getting himself together and he put the necklace on was that addressed uh, either in the beginning I, or the after party as why he was wearing that i don't think so there's some connection that i heard like after the fact like people were just talking randomly about it there's some connection with him and prince but i don't think it was addressed in the the uh before after party and he didn't talk about it in his set that i can yeah. recall about Prince. One more thing I want to bring up on on the on the Chris Rock special because I know we're like airing a bunch of stuff. And for those of y'all that haven't watched it, well, sorry, not sorry, y'all had time. I know. Spoiler but, alert. Sorry. Yeah, spoiler <laughs> alert, but not spoiler alert because y'all had time. I watched it yesterday. Um, he was dead ass on point, and I am. I stand for Meghan Markle, but he was dead ass on point when he talked about Meghan Markle. He definitely was. He definitely, yeah. And I don't think he I read it, but I don't, I, I, maybe I don't have the right context. I'm going to have to watch you it. You're going to watch it. When I read it, I was not feeling it. You got to watch it. I would, and, 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 and see, that was my thing. Probably another reason why. When he was talking about that, that black people also want to know <laughs> what color the baby's going to be. Uh, thank part. you. Okay, I mean, that, that is true. true. So, he, so he wasn't, I think the way he said it made it sound a little more crazy. What, what he was really trying to say, and actually, so this is why context. In the after party, Arsenio was like, he was like, that was a teaching moment because so here's the thing you have to understand about the after party. It was Arsenio Hall. Um, what's her name? Molly from Insecure. Eva or Yvonne, oh, Orgy, yeah. Yvonne Orgy, David Spade, Dana Carvey. So these two cis white men, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and JB Smooth. So Arsenio was <laughs> black explaining to the two white guys. He said, you know, in, in the black community, when a baby's born, we look at their ears to, because we know that the top of the ears is what complexion the baby's gonna be. It's not like, that's just a thing. Like he's like everybody's grandmother, like literally mm -hmm. that's a thing we do. And he said, that's something that's cultural. It, he didn't say it in the context of like, oh, we, we're looking for, you know, it wasn't a, a colorism thing per se. He was trying to say, he's just saying that's, to explain to you what he was talking about. And these two white men were in, they were in desperate fear. <laughs> they were, <laughs> David Spade was like, I ain't saying Jack. Don't, don't, don't <laughs> no, say Dana, Dana Carvey <laughs> did an Obama impression and he should not have gone there. It was real, it was kind of bad. Mm -hmm. And Kareem Abdul-Jabbar <laughs> being like this really proud Muslim and like such an esteemed black man, he was just, he wasn't there for, a lot of the chicanery that JB Smooth was doing. So it was it was such an awkward after show. But Arsenio was like just explaining. But that's what Chris Rock was trying to say. Like we we want to know too. Like and of course we were just like, dang, what's this baby gonna look like when Harry and Megan Megan's baby was born? Then when they had the other one, we were like, okay, now we saw this, what this one looks like. Now is this one gonna look look like um, the grandma? Like what? What was because we know as we black all people, wanted some tan babies, <laughs> and we want we were like, Yeah, what is it gonna be? Dark skin with tan. like red hair, like what's gonna pop out? We don't know. 
But there's um, the difference. But the difference, like he, he tried to make, like he, I mean, he stated, he, he stated. Was, he was fact. making the parallel. He was he just, he stated was the that fact comparison. That yes. not, not a one black person could argue that. Cause he knows, so why would people all know, we think in the same damn thing. Than what I read, why were people upset? I get that. What you're people saying. were upset because he was like, because he was basically calling, in so many words, he was basically calling Meghan, Mar Meghan Markle dumb. Like, you didn't yeah. know, like, or ignorant. I shouldn't naive. say dumb. You say or she, naive, she naive or ignorant in the fact that you, don't, like, she went on Oprah talking about the, the racism and the whole thing, the colors. He I mean, like, he's they like, created, they created race, like, not created racism. He was like, they're the, the, like, the kings of it, literally. They're the kings, kings and queens, queens of, of colonialism. They yeah, have like, been infiltrated and stolen lands and and jewels and everything like, from all these cool. countries. Yeah, and you gonna cool. tell me now you're surprised because you married into it, and now you're surprised that these people are racist? And I was like, you right, right. you right, Chris. I but wasn't mad at that I, joke. I, I, might be a little naive on this side too because when charles took that moment to walk her down the aisle i'm like oh there was that 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 whole moment where i thought oh they're going to step up and be decent people i never he, that. i felt like he didn't, <laughs> that's what i'm saying i was incredibly naive on that because he didn't have to do that and i thought that was a wonderful gesture considering her father was a total piece of shit and treated her so badly right before that wedding. And then him saying, let me do it. Cause he could have just not did anything. Um, so I was hoping that they would do the right thing. Um, I didn't expect so a whole lot. It's, so it's twofold. She's black and she's American. Like she, baby mm -hmm. girl, they have a chance. Yeah. None. Yeah. And I think that Charles, the only reason, Charles, when I saw that, don't get me wrong, when I saw Charles step in and walk her down the aisle, yeah, I got a little flustered, like, oh, that's nice. But I'm saying to myself, these motherfuckers don't do shit. I don't think he's without the one nothing. He was doing it for to save face because he knows that eventually mommy's going to be de dead soon. And now he's trying to save face and get some, you know, oh, we love Charles and what have you. Mm -hmm. no, I don't I think he's the, the one. I don't think he's the one that was giving her a hard time. So, and I don't, they never confirmed it, but I think they said the one that was actually giving her a hard time was his sister and like uh, Harry's aunt and was the one that was giving her a really hard time. And then Kate just wasn't being helpful. Which, you know, whatever. That, yeah, that could just be in-law rivalry stuff. Mm -hmm. She don't even like her own husband. So what was she going to like you for? But um, I think when, I think Megan got in over her head. And, and yeah. listen, people who don't have a, two nickels to rub together and no family notoriety can't get along with their in-laws. So, and that, and that could be, that's racial. It could be cultural. It could be whatever it was and it was it's two different cultures she's not she's not british she's american she's worldly she's divorced i mean she is like camilla on steroids oh That's like Megan. oh no don't you ever don't you take that back that back she is not camilla she mm -hmm. no well, listen when I, no, when I say camilla listen it's because I I am on steroids. i'm just saying camilla's divorced that's all i'm saying so camilla like, is a fucking side chick no we can't compare megan no. To Camilla. Y'all get it right. Diana was the side chick. Y'all can say what you want. Diana, Camilla was there before her. You know what? You right on that one. But at the end of the day, the reality of this is he married Diana. And she was she, the wife. Because she because he couldn't, marry, he couldn't marry a woman that was already married. But well, that, that is what he did it. Maybe if he stood his, stood his um, um stood up then, he would have had what he wanted instead of fucking up everybody's life. But, but all right, we, we have digressed. Yeah, Let's jump off net. of this. I, so both of y'all are giving the show a two thumbs up then, right? I say you got to watch it. I'm giving it two thumbs up and a and a and a twist around the world. Hey, yes, I love me some. 
<laughs> and you know, I got a little twitch twitch when he said he was single because I thought he was dating again. Uh, I like, oh, Chris, 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 my black that's ass. A, that's, a good seg- that's a good segue. Mm-hmm. For the- <laughs> yeah, going into like our unconventional crushes and <laughs> who we like. And so you can actually start, Tanya. Oh no, I don't want to start with Chris Rock. I've always I've always had a crush on Chris Rock because really? I, like, really? I like I like funny I like I like to laugh. Yeah. So for me, Chris Rock and any type of comedian that is gonna make me laugh, I'm I'm good with that. But I've always steered away, like I've always been attracted to like funny guys, but a, dealing with a comedian such as a Chris Rock, I don't know if I could date them per se, because I don't, I saw an interview a long time ago with um, Jim Carrey. And he was like, you know, it's hard for me to have relationships and maintain marriages and relationships because the people that I, I get with, they always want me to be on my game, like making them laugh. He's like, I feel like I can't be serious or if I'm feeling sad or if I'm feeling like I need some alone time, you know, they just want, they're looking at me like, make me laugh, motherfucker. And I'm like, you know what? That is true. So as much as I like to laugh, I don't know if I would, I could date someone like Chris Rock or like a Marlon Wayans or Arsenio Hall or whoever, because I'd be looking at them like, Motherfucker, make me laugh. Say it broke. Tell me something like Chris Rock and like Dave Chappelle. They're extremely funny, but they're very smart men. You can have a very serious conversation because they know society issues. They know political issues. They know black issues. You know, I find them to be very well-rounded as as men. So I would see, I could see you dating somebody like that. But anyway, so let's let's say what unconventional means to us as we get into like you know who our list is because I my, my list wasn't as long as I thought it was going to be. Oh, I got some doozies oh for you. So <laughs> that's unconventional, like people who you wouldn't normally, or just judging from my personality, you wouldn't think that I would be attracted to. So they're a little like offbeat, maybe you know different race. But some, which I found crazy, was I don't think that they're unconventional for me. I think that, you know, they're gettable. <laughs> so maybe by unconventional, like maybe people might be shocked. Like for you, it might make sense, but other people might be like, oh, I didn't see that coming. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I already know my zingers. I got zingers. All so, right. So who wants to start? The guest? Should we, should, we, should we go by like. Come on, Tracy. Movie? Should we go by like a theme? Like, so we already started with comedy. Do you have a comedy one, Shanita? You know what? Yeah, let's start with a. Yeah, let's start with a comedy one. It would be Bill Burr. Oh, I ain't mad at you on that one because Bill Burr Bill Burr stands for the black woman. Well, you know that's you know that's up my alley, Shahida. Because the red hair, Mm. (laughs) and which is not like he's not cute to me. He's like ugly cute. You know, but not, I don't call him ugly, but he's just like, it's, it's the bald head. It's you, I don't think there's a, a time in his career where I was like, damn, he's fine. But when he starts talking, it's like, okay, well, hi. Right. <laughs> like like a little a little show there. Just a little show there. I could, I could see it. I would date him. Who you got? If I was single. If I was single. For a comedian. So... I, I had one that I kind of floated past you guys before, but I'm, I'm switching it up. If we're talking comics, I would have to go, and this is a, a departure for me from what I said before, but for me, unconventional would be in May He Rest in Peace, I would say Bernie Mac. Because normally, yeah, like I now in my, in my, you know, now that I'm a woman of a certain age, I would say if he was still around, like, yeah, he probably would, because just funny, you know, he's got the stature, because I like a taller man, you know, I like a brown skin man, he had a good head of hair on him, and I, I like men with big eyes, I don't know, I, I really like, I like a little bit of a bug-eyed man sometimes, so yeah, a little <laughs> So you like a man know. with a thyroid problem. Huh? I like to know, right, like, right, got a little, little <laughs> going on. 
I just said I had to put it out there. You yes. we talking about comedians. You're like a man with a thyroid problem. <laughs> he was, he was, he was but I don't, yeah, I don't see that as a, a big segue away from you either. I can see that for you. But so no, but I really do like in like in real life, I like fine men. It's me, Bernie Mac is not fine. So no, no, okay. Okay. Fine, yeah. So from the comedian, okay, we already talked about Chris Rock and Dave Chappelle, which I think that neither one of them are are like aesthetically traditional. Traditionally, yeah. Mm-hmm. But they're funny and they're smart. And I like a smart man. Like mm-hmm. smartness gives me the willies. But I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna I'm I'm just gonna throw this monkey wrench into this. Y'all need to follow this brother on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, because motherfucking Emmanuel Lewis got me shook. Webster. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Birthday twin. Yes. Emmanuel Lewis. Webster. <laughs> I thought you were going to say like Cat Williams. Nope. Webster. Wait, Webster. Emmanuel Lewis, the the, the TV Webster. He, the I don't even know who he is. God forgive me, I shouldn't. I shouldn't have said that. I take that back. But, you know, little Webster. I didn't know he was still alive. Oh, he's alive, and he is out in them streets I'm on the, the following. I need. I need to see what's going on. Go to his TikTok. He be on TikTok. Webster. <laughs> Emmanuel <laughs> Lewis. Emmanuel Lewis won me over one night. I was on TikTok. I, you know, anybody that knows me knows that I go to bed early and I wake up at like two thirty in the morning or one thirty in the morning, and I'm wide awake. Mm, and now I'm on, mm, I'm on TikTok Emmanuel for three hours. Lewis. All right. And Emmanuel Lewis was live on TikTok, and he was playing his music. He was in his house, luxuriating, having a cocktail, playing '80s and '90s R&B music. And somebody commented, talking about he, <laughs> this is when Emmanuel Lewis won me over. And I was like, little man, I will date you and hold your hand and walk down the street in my stiletto high heels. And damn a motherfucker that tries to talk, sh- throw shade to us. You he was like, him. oh, I, oh, hell yeah, I date him. He's our age, child. He might, I think he might be like maybe a year or two younger than us, but he's in our age group. But he was like, he was playing his music. He was just doing, living his best life. And somebody had commented about, oh, you're a washed up old actor or whatever. You ain't got, you know. You so rude. Life. And he literally looked at the comment. And I'm just, I'm, this is me. I'm laying in bed watching this shit. I'm like, look, look at little Webster. Luxuriating, living his best life. And Webs, I saw the comment and Webster was like, oh. He's like, you know. I haven't had a house payment. I haven't paid a mortgage in like 35, 40 years. He's like, this house has been paid for. I got other properties. He was just like throwing it out there. And I'm just like, he's like, yeah. He's like, no, that's not that kind of party. I ain't got no yeah. debt. And I was like, and you know me, I was like, I, I want to go. I want to, I wanted to type and say to him, but you want to go out on a date? You slid in the DM, Sonia. I didn't slid, but I wanted to be like, you know, I, do you like a tall girl with high heels? Because I'll take you out on a date and I'll pay for it. I give a he shit. He did have nice hair. He still got his hair, and he is gutter. He and when I not gutter, I'm, I take that back. He is petty as hell. Emmanuel Lewis <laughs> brings the pettiness, and I stand him. for it. And I legit low key crush on Emmanuel Lewis. If you Emmanuel Lewis is crushing on oh, him, Tanya, you did not oh, come I... to you did not come to play. I, I didn't come, come to play. play. Emmanuel yes. Lewis literally. If Emmanuel Lewis slid, hey Emmanuel, if you slid into my we DMs, to to we, we going to we going to dinner. Down. We going to okay. dinner, and it's on me. Okay. What? I am ready. Amen. Come on, Emmanuel. We and said I'm conventional. And one. legit, I legit was standing for Emmanuel after that. I was like, I want to go out with you. 
Like I don't want to, I don't want to be your girl, but but maybe and beautiful, beautiful skin as well. I don't remember this. I remember Webster. I just never seen him as a grown adult. I've seen him like maybe not recently, but maybe like pandemic time when everybody was online. Definitely saw him like in a bit. I want to say in a bathrobe too, Tanya. Like I'm yeah. telling you, petty. He's petty and I live for it. And I love me some man, Emmanuel Lewis. He still looked the same, Shahida. He just a little bit thicker. And he, you know, but he still looked the same. But uh, don't stunt, don't you stunt on Emmanuel Lewis now. And tailored outfits. 100%. Mm -hmm. is, he, is he, is he, because I know he's not tall. Is he slender or? No. Okay. okay. I'm going to look him up. I'll look him up and see. Look any other comedians? Any other comedians? I feel like I have a list. Well, he's more of an actor. So are we segging to actors now? Well, I yeah, we can segue to actors. It doesn't. It, just go. It, don't it matter. doesn't matter. Let's just go out there. Because I, I got, I, I'm telling you, I got some doozies for you. Fine, you got a list. Well, did you, you said it, you said a comic though, right? Well, you, well, you said Chris Rock, but. um, you know, I like, no, she said Webster. Oh, that well, well, he. I guess he's he's a comedian. Well, he's not like a a, a stand up comedian. Does he do stand up? Yeah. Does he do? Stand -up? But no, I like. No, I, Tanya, um, I know. I know who your. I know who your comedy guy is. It's yeah. Orlando. Orlando Jones, yes. And you know when Orlando Jones won me over? It's the eyes. I'm telling you. It's the eyes. But when he won me over, because I used to see Orlando Jones like do a stand up and be in other like shows and stuff. And I would be like, I thought he weird. He, I thought he looked weird. Sorry, not sorry. I just thought he <laughs> was weird looking duck. But Orlando Jones, there's a, there was a show. I'm, I don't know if it's still showing, but it was on. I think it was on Stars called American, American Gods. American Gods. I knew you was gonna say that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was obsessed with American Gods, and there is a scene in American Gods. That Orlando and Orlando Jones got fight. And I, ooh, I'm, I, I might be talking. I might be not. It might not be true. So I'm not gonna say he got fired, but he got let go, or he People was no longer. He was not no longer asked to participate in the show anymore because he did a scene of. Um, he was like the devil. I think it was Shahida. Did you see that? I did. Well, he, was like, he was like the devil in a suit on the slave ship in the transatlantic slave trade. And in the bottom of the, the ship where, you know, mm. all these African men were chained up and he shows up and he literally, that literally is like five to 10 minutes of the best television I've ever seen in my life. He felt every bit of what he said. And I sat there and was like, I was laying in my bed and I was like, listen to me. It was at that moment that I fell in, I literally fell in love with Orlando Jones and there is nothing that Orlando Jones can't do. He, I don't care if Orlando Jones does some old trifling ass, step and yeah. fetch shit. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna stand for him. Everybody, go watch American. Just YouTube it. Don't even go to. Don't even go to Star. Just, just, just that, that Orlando that, that Jones American God scene, and you will thank me. See, that's the thing too. It's like you can get wrapped up in a character, and you're more attracted to the character than the actual actor. That's why I found like with my list, it's the character. Like if you're talking TV, Omar. <laughs> Does it for me from the oh, wire? Wire. From the wire? The wire. Ooh, Michael Isn't Williams. Just him with coming into a scene. Everybody <laughs> scurried. When Omar <laughs> walks down the street, everybody was like, here come Omar. Everybody leave. Here come Omar. Everybody leave. No, but I agree with you on that one. With with the scar, just like. Mm. Right. Like, and that was just him. Remember him as mouse? And um, um, devil in the blue dress. He has that 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 character that is like so dangerous. Mm -hmm. But the it's best like, one, who? Chalky White. Oh, Rock Empire. Yeah, Chalky White. Please, child. Girl. And that was the one I missed. 
Well, I you saw need it. to I binge it. A lot call of out of work. Call out of work all the rest of the week. And binge. <laughs> we got to watch that, Bula. Fire. We got to watch I that. Have to. So, oh, oh, my God. So, speaking of Boardwalk Empire, that's one from my list. Whoa. Steve Buscemi. Oh. That's a, that's a rough one, but he could get it though. He really could. Like under the right circumstances, he 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 does it for me. Again, Boardwalk Empire. Well, you know I what? Like I ain't gonna judge because wait till you hear my next zinger. Ooh, unconventional. Uncon unconventional, unconventional, unconventional crushes. True. We love it. But unconventional true. crushes. I, I will say this. Back to Orlando Jones. Like I know he was acting. I know he was playing a character, but if you watch that, like I've watched it like at least 15 times and he feels every, like that's him. Somebody like, get Orlando, like, somebody patch Orlando in. We need Patch him. Orlando through. Child, please. Oh, listen, but we, so we were, y'all was just about to catch, y'all was just about to patch Emmanuel Lewis my way. Now you, now you're trying to whore me out to or, uh, Orlando. Listen, it's whoever, a number. Whoever thing. gets back first. Whoever takes thing. first. You right on that. So All right. ready to say your other one, go. Oh God, let me look at my list. Um. <laughs> oh, I thought you had one right in the chamber, girl. What? Oh, I got one in the chamber. So now we're on to actors. All right, so actors. Oh, 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 go ahead, yeah. I have a few, but my number one is Ron Cephas Jones from This Is Us and Truth Be Told. It's Poppy Schofield's daddy on Truth Be Told. I love. I literally am. He has got this swagger about him. And I'm like, he's, I mean, he's portrays to be an older man on. Oh, the Hope. black man on This Is Us, the father. Yeah. The father, the, Sterling, the father. Sterling K. Brown's father, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he's yeah. Poppy Schofield, Schofield's father on Truth Be Told on Apple TV. I can see it. He is an exceptional actor. When I first found out about him. I mean, I'm sure he's been around for a long time, but when I started watching This Is Us, I was like, who's this man? Because he's an exceptional actor. And then I didn't finish the series of This Is Us because it just gave me too much anxiety and it made me too much, too emotional. And I was like, I don't need this. I don't need this drama in my life. I can't watch this shit no more. And then when Truth Be Told came out on Apple, I was like, oh, that's Ron Cephas Jones from This Is Us. And his swagger on Truth Be Told, I'm like, he can get it. He All he got to do is ring my bell. And I'll be like, hey, daddy. That's a good I need some shoes. Go ahead, Tracy. <laughs> oh, for actors? Okay, so kind of like piggybacking off the whole Bill Burr thing, I already kind of teased out that <laughs> I love a good redhead. The, mm -hmm. right, the right one. So, and this ties into Married at First Sight, too. So all that complaining Gina was doing. She just ain't met the right gingers, okay? Because there are some cute little redheads out here. And my redhead crush is Eric Stoltz, who's an, um, an actor. He was in a lot of stuff in the 80s and 90s. He yeah. Was, I think he was most famous for Mask, right? Wasn't he in Mask? He was in Mask. I'm trying to think of some other stuff that he was in, because his name is more familiar than I can think of his movies. I'm going I to do I don't right care about now. the acting, but just He's he's a beautiful redheaded man, like adorable. There's so many other ones, but he's my top favorite redhead. There's just something about a redheaded man with the right features, the right haircut. You know, don't sleep on them. But Eric is cute. It's hard to yeah, see him. See All it. you can see is All his hair. Is his hair. <laughs> Damn. Just Google him, people. Trust yeah, me. Yeah, just Google him. He'll put his picture up. He'll put his picture up. Okay, <laughs> another actor for me. And I'm surprised Tanya didn't say this, but she'll probably scream when she does. But this guy, to me, is just, he's, he's just sexy in a in a different way. Wendell Pierce. Oh, um, wait a The wire gets me, but him in anything gets me. And 
because when you see him in an interview, he just exudes like black manliness. I he's adorable to me. Love him. Very cuddly. Cuddly. Exactly. You know, yeah, that too. But I don't, I don't, and when I actually think of him, I don't think of him as like unconventional because, you know, he just has everything. Yeah. But when he cursed those people, crush. Well, well, no, when he corrected those people at that play, that stage play, mm -hmm. that was very, that was good. Cause he, and I wanted know, to normally, see that play. Normally wouldn't break character, but he was forced. His hand was forced. Mm -hmm. And that was, that was sexy. The ignorance, the ignorance. Mm. Mm. But you know, another actor, I'm just gonna throw out one one more and then you all go. What, oh, what's my boy? Um, huge crush. Daniel Craig as James Bond. Ah, that, you think that's not unconventional though, Shahida? Cause he's not cute. He's Daniel Craig cute. is ugly cute. Like, he is ugly when you just see him regularly, you're like, mm. but when you see him as James Bond, it's a whole nother level. I'm still like, mm. he, he is ugly cute, but I think, you know, he's white people cute. Mm. Sorry, did I say did that? Did you see that commercial? <laughs> That's all right. I agree with you. I agree with you, Tracy. Yeah. Like for, in his community, I'm sorry, is what I meant to say, he's probably considered an attractive person. In our community, probably not. He's no Brad Pitt. Let's put it like that. Oh, well, mm. <laughs> Brad Pitt. Well, no, that's my man. lost me there, Brad Pitt. Mm. Like, did you see the 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 alcohol commercial he did? And he's kind of like he, he's like dancing through. The, it's a um, I think it's bourbon Ooh. or something. Daniel Craig. Craig. No. I'll send you the link, girl. It's just so it's so I, corny. It's so corny. It's cute to me. That is cute. <laughs> so, All right, go ahead. So, one one that there's no disputing that he's not probably attractive to people in either or any of the communities, but I love him is John Malkovich. And that's, this has been a, a crush yeah. that's decades, decades long since Dangerous Lays on Days. If you don't know what that is, please look it up on Netflix, watch it. It's just his whole swag. And then as as if it's even possible, they put him in white whiter pancake makeup and make him look even paler, which is really <laughs> not even really a great look. Right, 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 right. But there's just something about him, something about John Malkovich to the point where they made a movie called Being John Malkovich because he's that dude. Yeah, he he, play, he plays good characters. I I wouldn't. Yeah, no, he's I, I don't know. but go ahead. What about I got, you, Tanya? I got, I got one more zinger. I got I got two more zingers. But one I, I like I like one, Tanya. One in the acting field. And Lord people and um, our YouTube followers, please don't come for me in the comments. But I'm just saying. Henry G. Sanders. If y'all watch Queen Sugar, he played he played Prosper. On Queen Sugar, the old man. I didn't watch Sugar. Uh, Who now? What Queen TV? Sugar? Henry Henry what? All the same Queen one? Sugar. Queen Sugar on OWN. Oprah Winfrey Netflix. Hen Oprah. What's his name? It's Henry G. Sanders. He's a senior oh, citizen. Who but was he dating the aunt or something? He at the at the oh, series. Yeah. <laughs> the series. Ah, the series is over, but. He ended up getting married, but throughout the season, he was like, he's so old. Like the great grandfather. <laughs> so you <he had laughs> dropped her phone. All your granddaddies and your great granddaddies and your great uncles and everything. Oh, I am that girl. Listen, he <laughs> when when Queen Sugar first started on OWN, I loved it. And then Prosper came along and I was like, who's this little man? And then, like, as the series kept coming here, he's like, he's like a senior citizen, and but he had like this power and the swag and the strength that I was like, I like this little old man. Like, if he saw me in the street, I'd be like, he said, "Hey, girl," I'd be like, "Hey, daddy, buy me some shoes." <laughs> he I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad. Don't at tell that. me he's not an ugly man. No, he's not. I'm looking at him. I was just shocked that he was so old. 
But it's a heat uh, I like a little salt and pepper. Listen, <laughs> Harry G. Sanders can get it. And that to me, from an acting standpoint, that's good acting because if I saw Harry, Henry, whatever his name is, Henry G. Saunders on the street, I'd be like, eh, go away, grandpa. Like, you could be my grandpa, my papa. But he's eyes, you can can you see his eyes? Like they're like a light. Like a light. Yes, he has color. like a he has like um. Oh, I, remember him. I remember him. I remember him on the show. He looks good. No, I'm not mad. That's a black man. Mad. He, he actually looks like my um aunt's boyfriend. <laughs> you better tell your auntie don't bring her boyfriend around me because I'll be like, hey, prosper. So let me tell you. So <laughs> my aunt's already like in, well into her sixties, and her boyfriend, I think he's in his seventies. And when I met this guy, like we were having great conversation. I was like this. Guy is a great conversation and very good looking man. I can, I'm like I can see it. Yeah. So that's my that's my dude, Prosper. All right. I mean, well, Henry G. Saunders, I should Sanders, I should say. I I think he's hot. He wears if I you can, watch. I could for so anybody that watches Queen Sugar, like you'll see him with his little blue jeans on and his little shirt and shit, and he's just got his little boots on and he's walking and I'm like, go ahead, bro. Are they in New Orleans? So he is. Yes. Okay. So Tanya, you said once that you you weren't really considering getting married again, but would if 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 Henry G. Saunders? No. <laughs> no. You, that's a that's like she you, said it so quick. No. Listen to me. Let me just make this very clear. If Chris Rock rang my bell tonight, or Dave Chappelle rang my bell tonight, no like, I love you. I want to marry you. I'd be like, you know what? No, we can't. can't let's just do the Hollywood thing and just, you know, you got I your. I wouldn't place. marry either one of them either. I, I'm not marrying anybody anymore. Been there, done that. I don't Henry care who G. you are. Saunders, I think yes. Who? Um, Henry G. Saunders, yes. Henry G. Saunders. I, I don't. I wouldn't marry him, but I would. I would because he's an older gentleman. I might invite him into my home to live and, okay. and take care of him for the rest of his life until he dies. Now, I wouldn't marry him. I wouldn't marry him. I just, I just don't have, I have no desire to get married again. I'm, a, I'm been there, done that. I'm good. Um, and I don't even want to date anymore. Listen, that's a whole nother podcast. I ain't even dating. We good. I'm retired. I'm All just right, preparing you, you. I'm preparing you in case Orlando, you know, comes through. Orlando Jones. Or something. You can take me out and we can have a nice night. Um, okay. I, I only have one zinger. My list is kind of small. I only have one zinger and I feel actually I have two zingers, but I don't even know one of them's names. So <laughs> it may be only one. <laughs> but I'm, no, I'm going to hit y'all with my real zinger. And I only discovered that it was even a thing earlier this afternoon when I was compiling my list. So my zinger crush, and this is just a crush, is Niecy Nash's wife, Jessica Betts. That's a hot bitch. I'm sorry. She cute. <laughs> I had to walk away. I had to walk away because birthday twin. I agree. Like, so here's, here's, she doesn't have the equipment that I need. Right. However. I love how she dresses. She just has a presence about her. And if she invited, if I was single, right? And she was like, do you want to go on a date? I would have to think about it. Here's the thing. I don't even know what to say about that because you got me shook right now. Jessica Betts, I'm saying. Right. I agree with you. That's why I had to get up and, and take me a step away because that is a zinger like no other. Really? Um, so you, that's why I saved it for last. She, course. Jessica Betts, I've seen her on Niecy Nash's Instagram. I've seen them do interviews together. She exudes a level of swagger and confidence that most men that a born man will never possess. 
And I, so when Nisi Nash made this announcement, got married, married a woman, had never in publicly dated a woman before, like nope. under normal circumstances, I'd be like, she is bugging. She's like, that's what I said when Anne Hayes did it, right? With Ellen. But it makes sense for me with Nisi Nash. I get it. I wish them the best. Yep, I, I agree. I wish them the best, but I, I cannot with her. <laughs> with Nisi? No, I love Nisi with oh. her wife. With her wife. Yeah. It, she's a absolute turn off for me. Oh. Like when I see her I like in interviews and stuff. I it's I get what you all saying about, you know, what you, like Tanya, you said there's a swagness about her that she exudes that no man can can deal, can actually do. And it's the opposite for me. She's to me, I'm looking at her and I'm like, she's just trying too hard to be that pimp daddy. I think it's effortless. Person. I don't think she's trying at I all. I agree. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. I didn't know. She could because, definitely because, hold my hand. Yeah. Because <laughs> well, well, here's the thing. I'm I I don't I'm not I'm not gay. So oh, or I should I shouldn't say that, but I mean I'm not gay. But at the end of the day, like I don't know how I I would how receptive I would be to that. But all I'm going to say to this with regards to Jessica Betts is that if I didn't know who she was, let's not get it twisted. She presents straight masculinity, masculinity. So if I, we was out having our diva brunches and she walked in, she's not ugly from a male perspective. I'm looking at her as a man not a woman i can't see it i'm not i'm not looking at her as a woman like a trans gender I'm just like looking man. as a person just like right as, as a person a person but i'm looking i'm also looking at her as a man so if i we were sitting at brunch like we was at brunch the other day if she walked in with her outfit and whatever and the swagger that she presents i would straight my feminine brain would look at her and be like, like, doo, 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 be like who is he? I'd be like, who is he? He's handsome. And I like his swagger. Now, obviously, that would be a whole nother conversation to be had if, you know, we got to talking and then it come to find out that you're like a, a woman. That's a whole nother conversation. But initially, I'd be like, Oh yeah, he's cute. He's kind of like he's something. He's. I'd look at him. I'd give. I. I. I'd be like this at the bar, like, hey, hey. Oh, hey, she could definitely send me, me a drink. drink down. Like, send me a drink. I'll take it. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm with it. That was that was a <laughs> brain turner right there. My brain is still frozen. <laughs> it's all. It's it's that's that's. Hey. It. Unconventional crushes. Unconventional crushes. I don't think I've ever looked at. The thing is, I don't think I've ever looked at a woman and thought in those terms. I've looked at women like, oh my gosh, she's so fine, blah, 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 blah. But would it make me feel like, oh, I, or, no. I don't think I've ever felt that way. No, I've never felt that way. But here's the thing. I don't know if, like I said, I've the, women we we compliment each other all the time. Like we just did it at brunch when when those young girls was walking in with their funky, their fabulous ass outfits. They were great, and those they looked so absolutely amazing. And we were like, I was like, yes, queen, get it, sit down, we love you. But again, with a Jessica Betts, again, I'm I'm saying this as if I didn't know who she was, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? If I was sitting at a bar or at brunch somewhere and she walked in, I'm, when I look at her, my brain is going to be like, Oh, that's a, that's a, that's a good looking dude. I'm not going to think that's a woman. I'm going to think that's a, a it's just, it's, man. there's a whole vibe there. It's like an energy. Yeah. Thing. I think it's that's more her energy yeah. than anything. Cause right. she looks like a woman to me. But her energy is very masculine. It's, you know, 
she does have a vibe about her. And I do like the relationship that they have. I just said, when I see her in interviews and stuff, it's always, I don't know, it, it, it's, it's a lot. She's putting But I think lot. that's part of the whole unconventional crush thing is like there are these little things that make, right. make other people take. I think I was saying to you guys, like sometimes it could be just the way someone's penmanship looks to me. And I'm just like, oh my God, look at their beautiful penmanship or the shoes are just on point or the teeth are just popping. It, it's just like these little things in there. It's just an instinct. There's nothing that's that the person's like, you know, it's not any one thing. You know what I mean? It's right. just the thing that that sets you off. Just like Bill Burr. It's like he's really not trying to do anything. Uh -uh. Yeah, like a lot of my unconventional um, crushes are actually political commentators. Oh, not Bill Maher. Well, okay, let's end it on this. Who's your, all right, so who is your political, who's your do oh, we yeah. have political we commentator, on unconventional way. crushes? Shahida, will let you start. So I told you guys Ari Melder, but I don't think that's unconventional because he's just, <laughs> Tanya. That's pretty unconventional. <laughs> you think so? Okay. I, it is. It is. He, Most he people is. don't have crushes on political comments. But it's more, I, it's actually more on people that I can't see. So it's their oh, voices like or oh. stuff. Like right now, I don't know what this guy looks like. I don't want to know what he looks like. His name is Andrew um, Levy, and he has a podcast, Abnormal, oh. Ab Abnormal um, Times or something. It's, I have a crush on him. But I don't know what he looks I like. Love and I'm, that, just on his voice. Just on his voice and the way he thinks politically. And I'm scared. I don't want to. I don't want to know what he looks like. I know he's a white guy. <laughs> and he's with this. His host is Danielle Moody, who's a lesbian. But I kind of, I, I kind of like her vibe too. Not the same way as you guys with Jessica Betts, but it's called the New Abnormal. So I, I, I have a huge crush on this guy. I'll have to look it up in his voice. Oh yeah, I'll listen up. I'll look but it what up. What he says, not his voice per se. Mm -hmm. Tracy, do you have any political in unconventional crushes? I don't. So I think this counts because it's unconventional in the sense that he's gay. And I think he counts because it's Don Lemon. Love him. So cute. I have a little crush on him. I can see that. I can definitely. I think a lot of people do. I think a lot of people do, whether they want to admit it or not. But yeah, he, and then when he, when he goes on like a rant, because I don't want to. When he's CNN. drunk on New Year's Eve. Child. Girl, I live for New Year's Eve with Don Lemon in New Orleans, showing his whole his drink, ass. Give him his drinks back. Like, stop. Let him have. Oh yeah, they, what, they, ooh, they. Ooh, and and Anderson Cooper. Yeah, no, he doesn't do it for He's me. Okay, you me. know what the worst one is for me, and I, you know, I'm not even gonna say, but um, go ahead, Cheetah. No, no. With the cats out the bag now, I don't said a woman. That's Just a woman. say it, cause you know everybody want to know. You opened your mouth, and <laughs> say it. Who's it, George Stephanopoulos? <laughs> no, it's actually 10 times worse than that. How can it be? It's not anybody on Fox. That's oh, what thank you. I was about, I was about to flatline, child. I was about to be like, bitch, no. don't have me get in my car because I will drive my ass to Providence. I right was, was bringing my face to you so you can smack it. Don't worry. It's not, <laughs> not that. Is it Rachel Mack? <laughs> So that's it. We're going to wrap it up. Please, it's Rachel Bell! <laughs> Tracy, you got to You got her. No, I'm messing with that. I'm messing with that. You know it's not no Rachel Bell. But Tracy, I, I, you know what? I said that. You stand her. I did used to look. I, I, that's my girl. But it's, it's okay. not her. We, we good with that. We good with that. It's not her. <gasps> well, then who is it? Come on! I I am not ending this. We got I am not ending this recording. Know. I'm not ending this recording until you say it. I'm right. here all night. Okay, let me explain. It's like 
a person that you, that I yell at this person every morning, <laughs> like all the time. Who not fucking morning, morning Joe? Not Joe. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank God I've got my goblet. So on that note. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. It's okay. We, we, we still we, love you. I we still like love you. Very cleansing. It was it was during the pandemic. <laughs> he was playing that corny ass guitar all the you time. Got, you're about to start crying. <laughs> She's having a moment. She's having a pandemic moment mm -hmm. and I'm feeling it. It was at least, at least, at least, corny at least ass didn't say Fau guitar. Didn't say Fauci. No. <laughs> yeah, no, not Dr. Fauci. He's like a hundred. No, thank you. I don't even know why, how it started. I know it was during the pandemic and it's, it's, it grosses me out a little. I don't know why it's, and then, I, and then no. and Mika together, it's just like, I, I, you know what? I don't like, I'm not a fan of hers. I don't mind Joe, but I don't, I'm not a fan of hers. That's why yeah. the way she talks, like every time, like, because here's the thing, I wake up early. So my morning routine is, you know, I'm usually up by like 4, 15, 4, 30. And then five o'clock I put it on MSNBC and I watch like, it's way too early for this shit with yeah. John. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, that's the way, that's what it should be called because I literally wake up every morning. I'm like, I can't believe I'm literally turning my TV on to watch this shit at fucking five o'clock in the morning. But here that's we are. a great name for a show. Actually. Yeah, it's just way too early for this shit. It should be <laughs> too early for this shit. It's just up too early, isn't it? Or way way too early or something? It's it, says way, it, yeah, it says way too early with Jonathan Lemire. But mm -hmm. I'm like way too early for this shit because my I'm just shocked that my ass is up. And then after it is Morning Joe. And I've tried to watch it because I'm a fan of, um, what's his name? Willie? Willie? What's his name? Willie Geist. Willie Geist. I like Willie Geist. And I don't have a problem with Morning Joe. My problem is Mika. 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 <laughs> Mika. I can't watch it. I will I will have it on and then as I'll listen to Willie and I'll listen to Joe and as soon as Micah opens her mouth I can, I am like running towards the remote like like it's like the it's like the Aww. let me just give you let me give you the visual. So you know when the dog commercials come on in the arms of oh, the angel <laughs> I literally will yeah, I will I OJ I will OJ sprint over the bed and over the couch to grab the remote to change the channel because I don't want to see poor animals getting killed and left out in the cold when Mika's voice comes on I'm like where's my goddamn remote I got to turn this to friggin' WCVB and watch a local shoot and local news. All right, let's not tell anybody that, but let's 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 end it. What anybody else? I, I think I, I don't think there's anywhere to go from here. Yeah, I don't I think we're good. <laughs> well yes, Tahiti, you ended it. You ended it on a good thing. Morning say, yo. That was a high note. <laughs> Shahida's Shahida's boo thing. Morning yo. <laughs> don't tell nobody. Don't tell nobody. Oh, it's all gonna be on the internet soon. <laughs> oh, so, all right. Um, if there's anything we garnered from all this is that, you know, we about to hug Tanya up with some hot boys. And we're all like five dimensional. <laughs> we get the three. We're like five dimensions up in here. We're everywhere. We we're 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 all over the place with it. Hey, yes, we don't we, we are. don't discriminate. No, we don't. That hey, that's the that's the 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 message of the night. We ain't discriminating. We we ain't got we ain't talking about no ageism. We ain't talking about no racism. We ain't talking about nothing. We just like who we like and crush well, on. We didn't stuff. name anybody young though. Nobody was very young on our list. I didn't have anybody young on my list. I mean, if you I had to really like young that, that way, huh? I don't know if I like August Alcina seems to be available. Girl, you don't want that situation. <laughs> I can't believe you <laughs> said that. The whole 20 seconds. I'm like, girl. <laughs> He is cute though. My well, 
Yeah, no, I don't have anybody young. I think the youngest one on the list was what we talked about when we was at brunch, Steve Urkel. Oh, but not the actor. Oh, not okay. the actor that portrayed him, not Julia White, but I like Steve Urkel because oh, I am okay. kind of I I am kind of prone to like nerdy guys and I like the the whole okay. brain thing. So So a young one, like weird, unconventional, would be Kodak Black. That's like yeah, my dirty secret. Okay. Ooh. Steve Urkel is my dirty secret. Kodak Black is Tracy's dirty secret. Who's your dirty secret, Shahida? Come on. I already said my dirty secret. Anybody? Oh, Morning Joe. Yeah. <laughs> no, oh, a young, yes, Morning Joe. You got to pick a young, a young one under 30. A young, young would probably be, oh, Spider Man. Tom Holland. Okay. As long oh, as okay. Tom Holland. Holland. Cause I'm like, motherfucker, everybody Miles, can't fight a man. No, I thought she was going Miles Morales. I'm like, girl, that's too young. <laughs> oh, but yeah, but the cartoon is so good. Can I be in the cartoon? Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. Though. Tom it's Holland cute. is good. Tom Holland is good. That's in Days Man, is you, you, you ain't, you ain't ever together. Ooh. I thought they broke it. I thought they broke up. But no, here we go. No, it's the guy together. from you, the guy from Euphoria. Which the, one? The drug dealer. Oh Lord! <laughs> now we're now we're digressing. Let's stop. Let's just also, stop. Also, also, also also I've never oh, seen Euphoria. Jesus. Huh? I haven't seen Euphoria. Okay. You gotta watch that, Shahid. You got cute so, that up. You're gonna call out from work. You're gonna watch Euphoria and Boardwalk Empire this week. Okay. You, yes, you got to take two weekends in a row. One weekend watch Boardwalk Empire, and the other weekend watch Euphoria. I, don't know why I didn't watch Boardwalk Empire. That's like right up my alley, and I didn't catch it. The Strays. <gasps> I did, did you? Watch I watched it? it. I watched it. Okay. One. Uh, all right. Let, okay. Let, 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 let's let's end this by talking about it because <clears throat> I watched it. Are oh, you going to talk about it now? Well, okay. we talking about it now. Okay. Let it go. Spoiler alert. It's going to be a spoiler alert, but I liked it. And I paid attention. I, I took your advice and I literally sat here. I watched it yesterday. I watched The Strays first and then I watched Chris Rock. Mm -hmm. And I put my phone down. I put my phone on vibrate because I was like, I don't want to be disturbed. And I watched The Strays. I liked it, mm -hmm. but it didn't, didn't do anything for you. Didn't do anything for me. She did. She did what I anticipated her to do is to run away again. And I was like, I didn't anticipate that. It? that. I'm glad you yeah. saw it. But when she did it, I was like the kids. I was like, because it happened so late in the movie, mm -hmm. I thought she was going to come and like save the kids and maybe like go upstairs and get a gun. Mm -mm. Homegirl bounced. She I was like, oh. but, but I love that for the movie because it just showed it, it wasn't a tidy ending. It wasn't a happy. It was like, it really was a jaw dropping ending because she was basically like, fuck all them kids. And yeah. Her husband. So yeah, I, I really like the ending because like the 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 beginning it was going in different directions and I, I was just trying to it was unpredictable. It I I agree. thought it would be unpredictable. And that's Agreed. what's wrong with a lot of stuff now. It's like you can kind of figure out what's gonna happen. I could not figure out what was happening no. in this movie. Same. And, Same. I and that's an English movie kids. for you. They do a, the English. Twist. Koreans and Asians, you know, other Asian um, countries do a real good job, in my opinion, of keeping you guessing and mm -hmm. not figuring it out until the end. So I, I, really, I, I liked it. Like, I felt like you did, Tanya. In the beginning, it was just like, I was just trying to figure it out. The writing wasn't like super great, but mm -hmm. there was a nice th um, mystery to it mm -hmm. that kind of tied up in the end. And I love the ending. I, I, I liked it. Don't get me yeah. wrong. I liked I liked the movie, um, but I just kind of saw the writing on the wall. Like I was like, "Here," would. and then of course me, you know me being me, I'm pausing. I'm like, "Shit, what? The, we got like five minutes left." I'm like, I'm screaming at the TV, like, 
Do something, bitch. Kill your husband. Kill them. Kill them kids. <laughs> kill somebody. I want to see some shit. I want to see some blood and guts. And when she fuck, when you when she fucking, you heard the the, the feet tapping, 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 running, and the door shut behind her, and I was like, and in the motorcycle, <laughs> that's room. Oh yeah, I'm like, bitch, done left. She done left again, and I'm looking at them kids like, y'all, y'all shocked. <laughs> like the, the best best. Shocked. Best line in the movie. Where's mom? <laughs> exactly. Out. God. Out. Mom, mom, mom is on to the next city Rich. in England the to build a whole new family. Where her, it, just, where her it showed she was the most dangerous character in that movie. No matter who had a machete, no matter who was threatening who, yep. she was the baddest bitch in the movie. Yep. Yep. That, Cheryl, yep. Cheryl slash me. Oh, yeah. Yes. That and behind her eyes. Is it behind her eyes? Crazy. To me, those yeah. are two good Netflix movies. And that, that, that movie I haven't thing. seen behind her eyes, so I'll I'll cue that up and I watch it. Say that. another word. Please watch say it. It's nothing. a series, though. Nothing. It's a series. I think it's like four episodes. I saw it. I saw it on my Netflix, but I didn't um the I ending? Didn't about it. If you get this ending, Tanya. Then you need to sit down and write. You shit. need to write. <laughs> that ended took me. Me too. Of uh, behind her eyes. Yes. yes. Okay, I'll watch it. Okay. I'll watch it this week. All right, All right guys. Well, here we are. Thank Tracy. You Thank, Thank you so much. We love you. All right, everybody. We'll be back on Friday to talk about Married at First Sight. So we love you guys. I'm the only person that likes it. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Here we go.